yellow grub is a very calm aquatic parasite found throughout North America and it has been found in 56 species of freshwater fish. Smallmouth bass and yellow perch tend to be the species most commonly inflicted with the yellow grub in Ontario. Now, the yellow grub is classified under the Animalia King, which generalizes it with a few specific characteristics. For example, they are mitochondrial heterotrophs, which defines them as having multiple cells with mitochondria, and they rely on other organisms for their sustenance, which basically means they cannot live on their own, they will die without a host organism. The yellow grub has three quite unique and interesting life stages. To begin the cycle, we travel to the bottom of a body of water. The yellow grub is just beginning its life as a microscopic egg nestled in the benthic region of a lake, pond, or river. Here we see the tiny embryo preparing to hatch. Once it hatches, it is born as a free swimming organism. This stage of its life is known as the Myricidium period and is very short lived. Once hatched, the newly born Myricidium only have a few hours to find a host to attach to or they will die. Here we see some newly hatched Myricidium swimming around frantically in real time in search of a host to attach to. The host that these myricidiums are looking for is a gastropod, also known as the common snail. Once the myricidium have located a host snail, they attach themselves to the foot of the snail. From the foot of the snail, the myricidiums make their way into the snail's body. Once attached to the inside of the snail's body, it begins to form a sporocyst. Now, a sporocyst is basically a parasitic sac in the initial stage of infection in the snail host, developed from the myricidium. The now developed sporocyst begins to produce several redia. Redia uh, have prolonged microscopic sacs with a basic mouth, muscular pharynx, and a rudimentary gut and birth pore. The redia then produce many daughter cells called cesarea in the snail. These cesarea cells then leave the body of the host snail and proceed on to the next stage of their life cycle. The cesarea exit their snail host and begin to search for fish to attach to to begin the next stage of their lives. Once attached to the fish host, these cesarea are known as metacesarea. They attach themselves mainly to the tails, fins, gills, or fleshy parts of the midsection of the fish. Once securely attached, the metacesarea form cysts at the location of attachment. These cysts are yellow, gold in color, hence the name yellow grub was coined. When the host is eaten by a fish-eating bird, such as the blue herring, the digestive enzymes in the bird's stomach break down the cyst walls and the grubs journey upward to the esophagus and the mouth. Here the grubs reach maturity and begin to reproduce and lay eggs. When the bird feeds again and submerges its beak into the water, these eggs are released and the life cycle begins once again. In fish, the yellow grub parasite can be seen as a yellowish cyst most commonly found on the tail, fins, gills, or other fleshy parts. Though the parasite does not pose a direct threat to the fish during its attached phase, uh, the wound caused from the attachment may open up routes to different types of infection. The yellow grub can be found in most North American water systems and can range anywhere from about 35 to 90 percent prevalence or higher depending on the area. No conclusive evidence has yet shown any direct link between water quality and the prevalence of the yellow grub. A 1999 study of the Caddo River in Arkansas yielded results of 59 to 85% of fish caught uh, contaminated with this yellow grub parasite, depending on the area of the river. 
The yellow grub is generally not harmful to humans if ingested, though Environment Canada still recommends that your fish be thoroughly cooked before ingesting. For aesthetic reasons, however, the yellow grub can make the fish appear undesirable. If wanted, the grubs can generally be removed easily while cleaning the fish, much like popping a pimple. Yellow grubs pose a significant threat to aquaculture industry. Many commercially viable fish stocks are targeted by yellow grubs, such as catfish, hybrid striped bass, and largemouth bass. Coupled with the fact that 81% of fish farms in America use earthen ponds to raise their stock, it makes the yellow grub a significant economic threat to the farming, fish farming industry in North America. While there are many methods to deal with yellow grub infestation, there are also many barriers preventing fish farmers from effectively and permanently dealing with yellow grub infestation, such as cost, legality, and time. For instance, there's a therapeutic treatment method that both eliminates yellow grubs within an infected fish while protecting that fish from being penetrated by further grubs. This would involve injecting every fish within a population, however, and add to that an already expensive treatment cost per dose makes this method very impractical to say the least. Seemingly, the most effective method to impede or stop yellow grub infestation is to disrupt the life cycle of the grub on the host level. Disrupting this cycle on the bird host level is hindered by many of the host bird species being government protected. Probably the most effective way of managing bird host numbers is reducing any shallow shores and stock ponds, increasing the pond edge depth to 18 inches, limits predatory birds hunting areas significantly. Other available methods are temporary with questionable effect effectiveness. These methods include pyrotechnics, reflective objects, and inflatable deflatable scarecrows. These methods Methods provide only a temporary relief, however, as birds become accustomed over time. Much more effective, however, is, <clears throat> is disrupting the snail host life cycle. This can be accomplished through chemical, biological, and mechanical methods. Chemical controls include various mollicides. However, these are fairly expensive to maintain. Another option is copper sulfate which unfortunately is primarily only effective in warmer wa waters, which limits its application in North America. Also, long-term use of copper, sul copper sulfate as a control results in excessive accumulation, which negatively impacts food supply for fish. Another means of snail population control is, in is an introduction of a predatory species. Approximately 25 species were investigated for suitability as a means of control. Initially, the reed deer sunfish was determined to be the most suitable, as it was the most widely distributed of native mollusk eating species. However, the reed deer sunfish was determined to be lacking sufficient veracity to be completely effective. Beyond these options, you may seek mechanical remedial options such as plant removal, limiting growth, and drainage and scraping and drying of the afflicted pond or lake. Removal or reduction of aquatic plants limits snails' foraging area, as well as one of their main sources of refuge. Drainage and drying is technically the most effective method of completely removing yellow grub population. However, need for year-round production makes this process unfeasible, as well as suspended particles released from scraping negatively impact water nutrients, fish feeding, and also negatively impacts fish respiration. No one method seems to be completely effective with dealing with yellow grub uh, population. However, a combination of rear deer sunfish and mollicides is probably the most efficient, cost-effective means of yellow grub control.